Oh, snap. Here we go. The Cardi B and Joe Budden beef exposed right here. The truth behind all of it. Your boy Sino is right here to outline it all. This has been going on since like 2016, back when Bad and Bougie was cracking. That's right. This goes all the way back then. So Cardi has become a casualty of Joe Button's pettiness and his BS. Joe Button has pretended his entire life that he was a man of the people, that he was anti-system, anti, I don't want to be no parts of all of this. But it was a lie. It was because he wasn't there, he blamed the majors. Like, I didn't want that. That's why. Then when he started getting put to a pedestal, because Diddy said, I want to help you. I heard about you, but I want to help you. And he took you on this wing and started opening doors for you to do stuff. Then you started to get to that light where the money is. Now you're corporate. And you have a warped sense of humor and a warped opinion. Now it's going to get a little dark. But let's get into this, people. Let's go. I'm ready for it. Kick the intro in. I love how I do magic. The, the intro didn't pop in, though, but it snapped me out. Okay, snap to the intro. Hi, I'm Carcino. Oh, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. No one knows Parcino and none of these. There's so much going on in the world. And I'm just giving my two cents on it. Go in and do a raid at someone's house, but you don't have an arrest warrant for them. That's right, Jack. We are back. Now, as we told you prior, this thing was always bigger than what you knew. Because this goes all the way back to bad and bougie. And when you start saying, well, what's the situation here with bad and bougie? It's clear. Bad and Bougie was huge because it set the stage for what they said was the presidents of this entire stage set between Offset and Joe Button. Because the Migos, this would catapulted Joe Button back into the fame light. His beef with the Migos. Now, as you can see, screw that fat bastard. Now, during this interview, Things got heated as Joe was totally disinterested in them and being confrontational in the interview, dismissive, and they're noticing it, out, especially Offset. His behavior is way out of character. Then they just had enough of his rudeness. He drops the mic and walks out on these guys like, cut it off, like, forget these dudes. You know, just like, you are just being too nice. Like, what are we being nice to these people for? Cut the thing. So they cut the feed. He drops the mic. He walks off. Like, he got all this attitude and energy. Quavo steps up first. Then all set steps up. Then all three step up. Rest in peace to take. He step up, and now there's a major problem. Act don't know what to do in this situation. Everybody's running up. Act's like, please, 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 please don't do nothing. Well, I'm so scared. I don't know what to do. So they're walking up on Joe.
Now look, I just like, oh, let me please, 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 please don't hurt nobody. Please, this is my job, man. Please, man. And he's like, you the fattest dude I ever seen with skinny fingers. <laughs> so anyway, that happens. That led to a whole altercation, but it boosted them up in the popularity thing and took them to a whole new light. So Joe Button is propelled all the way up. Now, allegedly, there's this interview where Cardi interviewed with Joe. I don't, I've never seen it. But Cardi takes off. They have a lot of success. Her and, and Offset. <clears throat> They become married. They having kids. Her album is out. Nikki's been against her. And for all these years, it's been all of this action and energy towards, towards Cardi B. That's always been like on a slant. It really has. She's tired of Joe Budden slandering her. She's tired of it. Let's see if this is really a thing. If we go back here and get through all of this. I see our interview with Joe Biden. I have to get through all of this. Okay, so this is the interview then. I'll name this podcast later, episode 45 with Cardi B. That was like one of her first interviews. Let me see here. Audio SoundCloud interview. Yeah, it looks like that's it. So yeah, okay, she did do that. So this is everybody talking about the incident. Okay, here we go. Did the fans create their beef nine months ago? Then we have Cardi B obliterated anybody that's on a song with her, with Lotto. Then he says, Cardi B is afraid to put out a project. That's the last straw. This was the last straw four months ago when he assumed that she was afraid to put out music. Then she said, nine months ago, I feel like this guy has a problem with me. Then, of course, you know, we'll get to that, the single artist stuff. Then he put out something two years ago saying, is Cardi B a superstar? And then whenever he compares other artists, he seems to be taking shot. Saying everybody hates each other. He's talking about Cardi B and her, she's hating on people. So this narrative did Cardi B cheat on Offset? That was last year. Joe has been putting out nothing but Cardi B material and saying all this, these things about her for years. Then Offset on Joe Button disrespecting Cardi B's new song. He spoke about it when he sat down with, with Shannon Sharp. So you can see there's been a history here. Joe Button trashes Cardi B new song, like what? As soon as it comes in, he starts trashing it. Then he interviewed Tasha K. That became a problem. Then he decided it wouldn't be in his best interest to air that interview 
because of legal. She's involved in a lot of legal problems right now and everything she's doing, you know, legally, that wouldn't have been a good move for Joe Button. So he decided not to put out the interview. After he flew her in to do interviews, that's how petty Joe gets. Joe will take somebody and do interviews with them, even though he knows there's a problem with somebody that they got. And it's, he's just there to fan the beat. That's Joe. Joe has been doing that for years. Nothing has changed with Joe Button in that department. He's a petty, spiteful human being. I've never trusted Joe Button. He said some things that was funny on the show that we related to. But overall, this man is temperamental. He's very vindictive. And the majority of the people that rocked with him was doing so because they liked the pod. But now he feels everything is about him. And that the growth is about him. No one else contributed. It was just him. He's the reason it blew. He's the star. So it's all about him. Now, with that ego came a lot of people into his ear. Now, when he has Mark Kaiser as his go-to guy for information. And a lot of it has been speculation. Cardi had a lot to say when she was talking about her own project and went on a tyrant raid. It wasn't really that, she just vented. She was just had enough of Joe Budden's abuse of her. So I'm gonna step out the picture and let you hear Cardi B herself. Snap me out. I like that. We got to be fast on that edit button. Quick. I'm so tired of addressing people, but I'm, I'm not going to lie. I feel like Joe Button is becoming weirdly obsessed with me and weirdly obsessed. I don't know if it's with my album or I don't want, I feel like, I don't think that Joe Button is obsessed with my album. I feel like Joe Button is obsessed of criticizing me up and down. And it's, and it's just really getting me frustrated because it's like, bro, leave me the fuck alone. Oh, man. So, man, listen, bro. Cardi B just needs to accept that. Nah, she ain't got to accept all that. Come to Delilah without a mind. <laughs> Never get another Cardi album again. And you've been standing on that. I am standing on it. And they talked about that in the office when I went up there. Like but now that Cardi got something <laughs> dropping with my man Rob, Big Rob on Friday. That. That's going to be crazy, but that's what Cardi's about to be now. Just a single artist. You're not getting none of that. I mean, you was right, too. About what? About Atlantic wanting to put out an album. You was right. See, you be right sometimes about them wanting to put oh, out an album. We don't care about none of that I shit. I ain't spoken to nobody at Atlantic. I'll just be on a hunch. So you done went and got some information from somewhere. I just, let me just I'm sure it. somebody involved wants Cardi to put out an album. What? Yeah, of, course of course they do. do. I'm sure Offset wants Cardi to put out an album. Hey, fellas out there, boyfriends, y'all know that feeling, right? When you want your to get a job, <laughs> you in the house, your bitch, your bitch just won't leave. <laughs> She's just in there on top of you. <laughs> on top of everything, not giving you space. Let's cuddle. No. Yeah, no, get off my arm. My arm's sleep. Move. Go. Ain't you got an album to do? <laughs> Those are the girls you date, Joe, because they don't have any other jobs. <laughs> you took them away from their job, which was the strip club. <laughs> so you're their job. So they want to cuddle with you. They want to do all that stuff to make sure you're going to still be paying those bills for them. Dressing them while they spinning up all of your cash, <laughs> throwing parties for their homegirls in your house. So that's where it's at. And that's where everybody's at with it, Joe. So right away, you already know <laughs> you're being disingenuous right now. Cardi B has way more money than Offset. 
All right. Way more. And for you to make that assumption that she's got to be all up under him, like offset, like, why don't you get on your job? You already painting this false narrative, right? That don't exist, but you want to, you want it to exist so bad because you want to be in that entertainment space being the, the go-to guy and all this. This is why people don't really go to your show for interviews. They don't want to interview with you, Joe. They don't trust you. <laughs> <laughs> don't you got a single? You got a tour. Oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. Okay, so there you have it. There you have it. I'm going to give you guys my... ...of criticizing me up and down. And it's, and it's just really... I'm not going to lie. I feel like Joe Button is becoming weirdly obsessed with me and weirdly obsessed. I don't know if it's with my album or I don't want, I feel like, I don't think that Joe Button is obsessed with my album. I feel like Joe Button is obsessed of criticizing me up and down. And it's, and it's just really getting me frustrated because it's like, it's, it's something when my fans harass me for my album because my fans, when they harass me for my album is because they want it. Like, Bardigan harassed me for my album because they want it. Some of my ops, like, you know, second Bardigan harassed me for my album because they also want it. They fake act like they hate me, but they really enjoy my music. So, whatever. Like, I get why y'all be harassing me. But Joe Button, I don't understand this about Joe Button, right? First, you always talking about you got a source from Atlantic that be telling you about my album. And that's Atlantic... If I don't, if I don't drop my album, they going to fucking um, drop it for me. First of all, they can't do that. You want to know why? Because I don't send my music. I do not send my music to nobody. Only me. There's only two people that have possessions of my music. And that's me and my engineer F. None of my, um, none of my A&Rs have it. Nobody that personally work with me. I have a manager. His name is Tubby. He don't have none of my music. I don't send my music out at all because I just don't do that. Second, you're always talking about you have a source in Atlantic. You're a fucking lie. There's probably like 400 people that work in Atlantic, right? Probably. I don't even fucking know. But I only talk to a couple of people. And I'm going to tell you who. I got two A&Rs. And their name is Daryl and Johnny. Woo, she's naming names. I got two ARs, and their name is Daryl and Johnny. I don't work with no other ARs. I don't let nobody send me ideas. I don't let nobody send me hooks. So I only my day to day is Daryl Jones and Johnny. When it comes to the Atlantic team, I only talk to Julie Greenwald, which she's the president. Sometimes I talk to Kaiser, the vice president. Then when it comes to marketing, I talk to Marsha. And then I talk to Craig Kalman. And those are the main people in the building. I do not talk to a worker. I don't talk to this. I talk to my publicist as well from Atlantic, which is Ashley. And when it comes to Ashley, we don't even really talk about music. We talk about covers and uh, organizations and stuff like that. So whoever you be saying, like, yeah, I have a, I have a, I have a, I have a, uh, what's that called? I have a, I have somebody that works in Atlantic and they be saying, you're a fucking lie. That's yeah, not a lie. Mark Kaiser is, um, the guy that you talked, you named, um, uh, well, you probably don't talk to Mark. You probably talk to Ashley. Ashley's the person I know. She don't work there no more now. From what I've been told, since May, she she's been looking for another job, so she's job hunting right now. Uh, she normally works with Bruno Mars, so yeah, she's been like job hunting right now. She left in May, so Cino knows some people in Atlantic too. I ain't from Atlantic, but I make your ass panic. You're a fucking lie because I move like Adele. 
if something if something's coming out, I already know who said it. Cause I only talked to four people, four to five people in the building. Like you think I'm just going around and talking to everybody? Like you think when I have meetings, it's a meeting with 30, 40 people? No, it'd be a meeting of four or five. So you you're not getting information of me. You every single fucking every five, six months, you comparing another another female rapper towards me. You compare, you compare. You artists, you compare old artists, you compare every single fucking artist with me, bro. Everything, everything. If you love these so much, why are you not talking about their album? Why are you not talking about what they do? You compare females to me, you say you you compare females to me that my, my worst records beat their best records all the time. Every single time it's like it, and I and I can only imagine how you be trying to put down the you be fucking because you always constantly want to compare me to a and I don't give a fuck about none of these. I don't give a fuck what anybody got going on. And but my thing is that it's like you love them so much. Why you not why you not worry about their album? Why you not worry about what they got fucking got going on? Why you always worrying about what I got going on? And to and to be realistic, you're not worried about my album because you want to hear it. Because if you want to hear it, you could pull up to my studio session. TT Torres. The director of Hot 97 heard my album. She asked, she DMs me all the time. I want to hear what you got. I right, pull up on me. If you want to hear my album, pull up to my studio session. But you really want my album to come out so you could criticize it. Because every single time I drop a record, you don't like it. Every single time I drop something and they're doing mediocre, you say they're doing better than me. Every. You really, you really set up here in December. I was really going through it with my husband. I was really, really, it was a real, real tough time with me and my. And you really said, like, you really, you really sat here and said that I use my shit with my husband for publicity to be because of another. You think, you think, you think, you think I, I have a baby daddy boyfriend? No, I, I'm in a marriage. I'm in a marriage. And guess what? That shit didn't benefit not me or him because it wasn't about no benefit. I was tired of shit. My shit was on the rot. And you talking about, yeah, it's a publicity stunt because shut the fuck up. You don't even know me. Every Everything you do, whether it's my personal life or whether it's my music life, you're always talking shit about it. But then, but you fake thirsty for my album. No, you don't. You're not thirsty for my album. You're thirsty to criticize it. You're thirsty to kick it down. You're thirsty to talk shit about it. You never compliment me. When's the last time you compliment me? You were you were so thirsty to fucking fucking interview a you call you call her interesting. A they almost fucking made me go to suicidal in 2019. A said how many fucking lawsuits they got? They ain't such a boy a fucking uh, thing. So why are you always talking about my album and you got to connect? You don't have no connect. My family don't even know about my my business, my work business. The album is never good. What are you talking about? The shit is in motion. The merch is in more motion. The boxes, the box sets are in motion. You don't know what's going on on this side. You don't know it. If Let me tell you something. My fans... One thing about fucking Barty Gang, my fans, sometimes they be finding out shit. They be like, how the fuck? How you know? How you know? How you know? And they don't even know much about my album. So how the fuck you know? Always want to talk about somebody in Atlantic. You're fucking lying. I talk to the to the bosses. The bosses. I talk to only the bosses. And the bosses ain't going, going around talking about my shit. Leave me alone. I want you to leave me the fuck alone. And it's so crazy, bro. It's so crazy. Like, this is the same that gave me one of my first interviews. I don't know, is it because I used to give this lap dances and he's mad that, like, I, I have fucking succeeded so much in life. I don't understand. I don't understand why I keep getting harassed by this man. You want to interview or something? You want to hear my album so bad? If you want to hear my album so bad, you could pull up to my studio session. You could pull up. But I'm really sick and tired of you keeping my name in my my name in your fucking mouth 
and then you acting like you acting like you you keeping it there because you really want a project for me no you want to tear my project down like you tear down every of my single like you you tear down my single you tear down my personal life you tear down everything i fucking do so it's not coming from a genuine place leave me alone what is it that you fucking want for me what is it you want for me Cause you're not gonna last here. I just want the album. I just want the this. No, you talk shit about you talk you talk shit about every single I do. You compare old to me. You compare new bitch to me. You compare every single to me. You don't compare new to new. You don't compare old old. You compare everybody is everybody has to beat Cardi B, a new bitch or old. But it's Cardi B, Cardi B, Cardi B, Cardi B, Cardi B. If I suck so much to you, if I'm such a lazy artist, why the fuck my name, why the fuck Belkalese is coming in your fucking mouth? Belkalese, 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 Belkalese. Belkalese. All the time. Like, leave me the fuck alone. And I don't even be addressing you. I be ignoring you. Everything. You tried me in December when you said that, that I did that shit with my for publicity. You tried me. Really try me. And then you keep trying me. And keep trying me. And keep trying me. And then you keep lying on me. You don't know nobody that's in my team. I have a very... My team is smaller than my... And my asshole. And I don't even get fucked in the ass. So my asshole is small. That's why nobody knows nothing that I got going on when it comes to my music. The fuck? I'm really getting harassed by a whole. I'm getting harassed by a whole. She chasing cloud. He chasing cloud. What? What is there? What, what is there? Cloud to chase for? There's so many people you could talk about. You could talk about Drake. You could talk about Kendrick Cole. Fucking day. You could talk about every single that you claim you fucking love their music so much. But no. I've even I've even been on the fucking I've even I've even been doing publicity or nothing the past two weeks and and I still come up. Everybody dropping all these females are dropping album, all these females are dropping projects, all of this. Why are you ain't talking about them? You claim you like them so much, but no, you talking about you talking about the brim. All the time you talking about the brim. The fuck. What is going on? You want to hear the album so bad? Pull up. Pull up. I'm in New York. I ain't, I ain't going to get you touched. I ain't going to jail. I ain't going to have pressing you or none of that. TT Torres heard my fucking album. Pull the fuck up. And it's all the time, bro. It's all the time. Like, leave me alone. I do not bother nobody. And I do not want to go to my old ways of cursing people out. Well, I like to curse my fans out. But <laughs> we're in a relationship. Uh huh. What that mean? What that mean? Like it's so annoying, bro. Like it's so annoying. And it's not genuine because if it's like a genuine thing, it's like I right, no. You want you want you just want to talk about it and criticize it down you have not said not one positive thing about me i'm not saying not one positive thing about any songs that i drop you have not said nothing positive about any fucking feature that i drop so why are you so thirsty for my album you're not you're not you want to talk down on me mm. tell him Cardi. all the time it's annoying, bro. I never, I never see nobody. I, it's so crazy. 
is crazy, bro. I don't know what I did to this man all the time. Mm -mm -mm. Weird old behavior. You know what he remind me of? One of them prediction pages from Twitter. He is one. He's like he is really one of those prediction pages from Twitter that just be making shit up. Cardi X August featuring. <laughs> And it's like, yo, I, I have to come on my body and say something. I have to come on my body and say something because it's just like, yo, when does it stop? When does it stop? Like, why don't you leave me the fuck alone? If I'm such a lazy bitch and shit like that, why don't you leave me alone? I'm starting to think he's just obsessed with Dominicans. I think I might I might remind him of his his two last. I think I remind him too much of Tahiri and Sin Santana. I think he got something. I, I'm starting to think that he got something against Dominican hoes. Because it's like, bro, why are you always coming for me? All the time. All the time. And if you claim you're so cool and you fuck with me so much, you could DM me. And I'll give you I'll give you hints on when my album is coming. I think he got signed against Dominican. I think we broke his heart too much. Then again, Dominican got the best. We got we, we got that. We got that grip. We got that. See, I have also never gotten a lap dance from this lady. Bro, I gave you a lap dance two times and fucking started. You was high as fuck. High as fuck on coke. Smell that coke through your breath. That's one thing. Second of all, and, and actually, that's not even nothing to brag about. Second of all, you're like, I will never talk about this, 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 this and that. I don't give a fuck when people talk shit about talk about me. It's just the fact that you always talk shit about me, Joe Biden. You always talk shit about me. Out of nowhere. You would think I did send to this out of nowhere. For the past two years, this nigga have only talked bad things about me. Bad things about me. Constantly. Why? Because you got an interview? And the fact about it is that you don't even have to do that. Because I bet I know for a fact this is not telling you to do that. You just do that to pander. Like if I did something to you. All the time, I got to connect in Atlantic. I got to connect in No, the fuck you don't. I really sat here in December saying that I fucking got into it with my husband because this ain't my little boyfriend. This ain't my no fucking baby daddy. This only got been married for seven years. Oh, yeah, she did that for a publicity stunt because this and that dropped. What? Now is this girl. Now is this girl. Now I promise you, I can show you, I will never cause her that this girl. Now I'm this girl. Now I'm Cardi B, the you always talking shit about. I want to talk now. I've been giving you two years, sparing you for two years. Even when I call you out, I don't even disrespect you. You always try me. Always try me. I ain't fucking Drake. I ain't gonna fucking write no nice paragraph. I'm gonna come at you. I'm gonna shine that head of yours. I'm gonna shine it all the time. I ain't do shit to this. All right, boy. She went. She went in. She went. Now, as you can see, Cardi went all the way. And you could say, man, Cardi, she wasn't playing around. Why should she? <laughs> Joe Budden has done nothing in his whole entire time but talk down on her work anytime she released something. All because he did an interview with Nicki Minaj, and now he got on her good graces again. Nicki, what did I do? Now, everything he's doing, like she says, you're pandering that Nikki ain't even asking you to do that. She knows that. Like, that girl ain't asking you to do that. You're doing that because you're pandering. You are absolutely pandering to her. So cut it out. It's a gimmick that they seen. It's tired. It's old. It don't serve anybody any purpose. You're bitter. Cardi's been calling you out 
Offset's been calling you out and you've been milking it like a bitter little girl. Now he's talking about, I've never done coke in my life. And you know what, Cardi? He's right. Even though coke users are the biggest liars in the world, and he's a huge liar, let's <laughs> let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Because I know what he does, <laughs> or what he used to do. That boy, <laughs> oh my God, he might not have done coke. But that boy definitely 100% popped pills and was on dust. Woo, that boy loves the dust. That boy was Dusty Rhodes. Oh, boy, was he on dust. That boy was like pig pen in it. Dust everywhere. That boy loved his dust. Now, those were the early Joe years. That was pump, 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 pump it up. Ba -da, ba -da, ba -da. Uh, pump, pump, there, pump, everywhere, pump, pump. <laughs> that was him. <laughs> Dust it up. <laughs> dun, dun. <laughs> Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> yeah, I'm here to get it on, get it, get it on, here to get it on. Yeah, I need dust on dust. <laughs> so I can pump right there, pump right there, need dust right here, dust right there. <laughs> dust, dust it up. <laughs> yeah, damn dust head. Boy, couldn't live without them dust blunts, boy. Ooh, that dude was seeing stars. He had Mickey Mouse, <laughs> Pluto, everybody coming to visit him. He was, oh, man, I love this. <laughs> what is this, dust? Oh, this is amazing. <laughs> He's a dust head. Talking about I never got a lap dance from her. He don't really remember he was gone on so many pills and dust. Going to Starlets to get him a new girl. <laughs> Who's coming home with Joe Button tonight? <laughs> Who's coming with me? <laughs> I'm not mesmerized here. <laughs> That's what I tell you, man. Clowns. <laughs> this dude was Dusty Rhodes for a reason. Clearly on dust. Every day, dust, dust, dust. Dusty Rhodes. He don't like his roads clean. He like them dusty. Now, oh, that's the dust buster right there. Joe Button, dust buster. Now he's I'm never going to mention her ever again. No, no, no. Uh, I think she can live with you just leaving her the hell alone. Yes, and Cardi, she is very insecure. She has a lot of insecurities. Sometimes she is a very huge head case. She has a big heart, but she is a head case at times. And because of that, it's a lot of factors that go into the decision making and the processes that come along with that. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. I know, I feel the same way. So I want to say thank y'all again for tuning in. It's your boy Carcino. Don't forget to like the page, uh, subscribe, all of those wonderful things that you love so much. You could donate to the Cash App, which is Carcino, right there on the Cash App. Like, share, subscribe. The Patreon is Carcino for life, and I'm out the dough. Deuces. <laughs>